Hey guys, it's Tiffany here, and today we're gonna do a little story time as I dermaplane, and we're just gonna get to it. So a lot of you guys may not know, I recently went to a healing retreat, and that was back in February, but before that, I think about five years ago, I really started to go deep into kind of self-exploration, kind of like really feeling lost and feeling like I needed to find myself. And I'm not sure where you're at in your life and how you feel, but I just felt like everything I was doing was kind of just not working anymore. And that really, you know, allowed me to kind of go deeper and see like what's going on with me? Why am I so triggered? Why am I so angry? Why do I feel like I'm blocked? And I'll be sharing a little bit more of that later, but I just wanted to reintroduce myself and kind of let you guys know I'm going to be sharing my journey here on this platform and I really want to be more vulnerable. There might be things that I don't really even know how to express, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I feel like just being raw and authentic and real is the best way to just be and maybe some of you guys will resonate and some of you guys may not, but you might be interested. So I'm just going to go ahead and share because I want to document this part of my life because I think it's super important for me to look back and see my own growth, see the changes, see just kind of what I was experiencing and also for my kids to understand who I am. Um, as I go through that, I'm going to go ahead and use the derma flash right here. So I have this tool and we're just going to lock it in right here, click, and then you just pull it out. So here is the blade and you use it and then you toss it, but I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and use that. My skin is completely dry and clean and I'm going to go ahead and start. I don't really know where I'm going to start my story, but I'm just going to go ahead and vie with it and hopefully it can kind of better explain who I am, where my path is, where I'm trying to go, and also what I hope to do in, you know, sharing this on my platform for myself just to be a better person and to share anything that could help anyone out there. So. As I go through this, I'm going to share and I'm going to dermaplane. So I'm not going to really be talking about the tool because I just want to speak and share. I might kind of go back and forth because I'm used to talking about whatever I'm using. So just, you know, know that I might go back and forth with that just out of um, habit. But first, um, I'm going to be 42 in four months. It's crazy to think that. It's crazy to know that I've been living my life in such a way where in some ways, best way to explain that is just being programmed, programmed by society, programmed by school, programmed by your parents, um, things that you watch, things that you see, and how that shapes you and molds you into the person that you are. And I was just kind of like, there's so many things that are good but also there's so many things that I feel very blocked and to the point where I was feeling like, why can't I change this? And a lot of it was, you know, feeling like I need to have control of things, feeling like I need to be perfect in things to always over deliver, always, you know, show up in such a presentable way and not really be raw and authentic and fail and, um, just, yeah, be okay with that. Like, it's really hard for me to be okay with failure. It's, so, it's hard for me to be vulnerable. It's hard for me to, you know, share very, like, vulnerable things about me, especially in the public eye, right? Like, I think that's a very scary thing to do. I can share that with, like, my closest friends and family, which is really a very tight-knit of people. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. Um, so back in February, like only a few months ago, I guess four months ago, um, I went to a healing retreat and honestly, I didn't really know what to expect. All I knew when I went to this healing retreat that the expectation was that I'm going to heal a lot of the deep rooted trauma and deep rooted like things that kind of 
you know, operate, have me operate the way that I do. And as I mentioned before, a lot of it was having control. And for me, having control was knowing that I was safe. Knowing what my outcome would be was what I needed to know to feel safe. And um, with that, it just really kind of made me feel like I was in a prison. And as much as I felt like, yes, I have amazing things in my life. I have a family, I have a community, I have my kids. I felt like I was losing myself. I felt like I was dying inside. And when you feel that way, you know, you just kind of don't know what your purpose is and why you're doing what you're doing. And that's not a good feeling. Um, I know what my, what I want to do. I know what I want to share. And a lot of times being trapped into this program or idea of what I need to be prevents me from um, taking that leap of faith or trusting my gut and intuition of what I, what I really need to do. So what I'm trying to say right now is, as you guys know, I'm a beauty influencer, I'm a makeup artist, I'm a cosmetolo col uh, cosmetologist, hairstylist, makeup artist, esthetician, and tra like transitioning that to share my personal story, to share what I'm going through, seems so weird and seems so um, unfamiliar, <laughs> to say the least. But I'm trying here, and this is like so awkward, but I'm gonna keep trying. Um, and I keep going in different places on my face because I'm like, where do I start? Um, anyways, as I'm sharing this story, is that as a retreat, when I went into the retreat, I honestly did not know what to expect. And as I mentioned, I knew what I'm supposed to get out of it was I'm gonna heal the deep-rooted traumas. And even those things, I didn't even know really what they were. I kinda knew some things because I've done a lot of therapy, I've done plant medicine, I've done um, just kind of like retreats where it's more, more soul searching and different methods of just like really going deeper into the inner child work and whatnot, but still nothing was changing. Still, I had the awareness, but those things were still rooted in me so deeply that it was so hard to shift. It was so hard to make any changes. And I just went back to my old self, back to like responding the way that I do, reacting the way, I, way that I do, acting the way that I do, and just feeling so powerless. And so ah, just like, why is this still here? Why can't I make it through? Why can't I like beat this? Why is this um, like really just like controlling me in some sense. And so let's go to the retreat. In February, um, I was very, very lucky. There was only four of us at this retreat and there were different healers. And different healers, what I mean is like people that are intuitive, people that might be mediums, people that can see different frequencies and energy and people that can help me go deeper into my traumas, whether it's like inner child work or just really just helping me navigate what I need to go through, what I need to extract out of my mind, my body, my spirit. And prior to going to the retreat, I had so much pain up here, my neck, my shoulders, and my traps, everything right here. I hold so much stress here. And then on top of that, I have had TMJ for like 10 years. And so clenching, you know, just, not knowing subconsciously that I'm just like biting down or holding the stress right here in my master. So you guys may have seen some of my old videos of just, um, you know, different facial massages, which really have helped me with Guasa and just using my hands and just also getting facials, massages from other people have really helped relieve the tension, but then it comes back and it keeps coming back because I'm still going through that cycle of the same thoughts, same um, stress, same everything. And so, comes and goes, you know, I feel better sometimes and then feel really like helpless, pain. Um, on top of that, my hands. So my hands are much better, but before, as a hairstylist, I would work with my hands 12 hour days or more, working, cutting people's hair, makeup, 
you know, just everything that you do with your hands, tools, blow drying, um, just working with your hands, like it was just overused. I would get so much pain in my forearms, my tendons. So I feel like I had crippled tunnel tendonitis. I don't know exactly, but had so much pain that even when I slept, even, you know, up until recently, I would just sleep like this. And I wouldn't even know I'm sleeping with fits. And my hands would just ache in the morning and I would just have to stretch them out and, you know, just kind of like make sure I can like relieve that tension. And so, yeah, my body was literally screaming of pain because everything was showing up that way. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, feeling tired, no energy to work out, no energy to like, you know, give myself that time to work out, to stretch. I just was just literally surviving, even though I looked fine, I look healthy. People are like, oh, you look fine. You're fit, you're a mama too. You know, a lot of things that people see externally, they did not know what I was really feeling all inside and just a lot of pain, tired, no energy, lethargic, unmotivated. And so last year, I felt like a big burnout with, you know, just what I was doing for work because I overwork. I like to produce more than I need to. I like to just make sure, like I would create this schedule for myself because I work for myself and just produce, produce, produce content, film, 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 even though I really did not have to, but maybe culturally, maybe just the way that I was raised, uh, maybe just having this perfectionism that I had to perform to the highest level to feel like I was doing my part, which resulted in me with burnout and just feeling so like, ah, what am I doing? And feeling lost, feeling um, like I was losing my purpose, even though deep down in my core, I know what my purpose is. And so <laughs> I know I keep going back and forth, but this is kind of like a background of me and where I was at, where um, what I've been feeling physically, mentally, energetically, all that good stuff. So now back to the retreat, it was only actually like a four and a half day retreat. So I was like, how, how is all this gonna happen in four and a half days and come out a brand new person or more of the authentic person who I'm supposed to be free from all this trauma, free from all the things that have been like literally operating my life. and. I did not know what to, what to expect. And like I said, there was only four of us, which very, very lucky. And prior to retreat, I think like a week or a couple days, I don't even know how many days before, they let me know that I'm gonna be filmed. And a par big part of me was like, uh, all of the stuff, cause I really wanted, I was so ready. I was so tired and done with the way that I am. And I was ready to just like let everything out, all my deep, dark secrets, all the things that maybe I've never shared or expressed to anyone that maybe internally I was thinking, feeling or whatever. I was ready to just let it all diarrhea out of my mouth, diarrhea out of my body, let it just all come out. So when someone told me, or when they let me know that this is gonna be filmed and asking for my consent, I was just like, Fuck. oh my gosh like this is gonna be shared with the world because they're actually making a documentary of this healing retreat and I was like do I want to share this with the world do I want the world to know everything about me that I've been hiding for almost 42 years am I ready to say this out loud am I ready to face this and you know there was a part of me that was really, really scared and feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't even share this with like people around me sometimes, only like a handful. How am I gonna share this to strangers that are watching this, you know, whatever it's gonna be put on and really just like be okay with it. But that's how much I was at that point in my life where I just like, I have to let this all go. I have to let this all out because it's not serving me. It's not, benefiting me and if I don't let this go how am I going to heal how am I going to move on how am I going to step into the next version of myself and so I said all right 
<laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I'm gonna trust that when I look back at this, when I'm 80, 100 years old, my kids watch it or anybody else that watches, they're like, oh my gosh, that Tiffany right here, she's not the same person. And I hope that I can look back and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that was me. I can't believe that was me. I can't believe I was in this trapped, like, world of, that I created for myself to survive, to feel like I needed to do this, to protect myself. So that's kind of, you know, where I agreed to it. <laughs> going back to different planning, but um, as I was going through that mental process of, you know, letting go, that was kind of like a really big step for me to just like really, really let go and trust that this is for the higher good this is for the higher version of myself this is you know good for my family people that are going to be watching it um my friends whoever anybody and day one when i went to the retreat we did a lot of interviews and i also told my partner kian i was like please don't expose me let me have that uh, power let me have that uh, space to share what I need to share because he knows so much about me even if I don't share it with him but for me to express it because I needed to express it because so much of it's been internal so much has been hiding so much has been inside of me that I had to do this part for me to feel like I was empowered feel like this was my choice my decision and he honored that and it was hard because you know we have a very blessed relationship but we have so much trauma between the, both of us and we mirror each other and bring out the things that we need to work on so to say the least we trigger the heck out of each other and so sometimes we feel like oh my gosh why are we even together like it feels so hard because we're really shaping each other to face forward what we need to deal with and it's so hard it's so so freaking hard and if you're in that kind of relationship you guys know exactly what i'm talking about like when you have a partner that really you know emulates someone like your dad that um or whoever that you may have you know thought of as your you know father figure or someone that you really you know think of that you know can may have been your safe space that should have been your safe space but safe space but wasn't and to have that um and emulate a lot of things that re-trigger the core trauma is just so freaking hard and Kian is that person and it's funny because when I met him, I was very much like, I do not want to date him. I do not want to be with him. There's so many similarities of him and my dad that I was like, I don't want to be with this guy. But then again, he is my spiritual leader here on earth. He is helping me to really help me navigate and grow and face the challenges that I need to face to become the better person, the best person that I can be. And I do the same for him. And he is just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> He's like, so he calls me the dragon. So he always says, I'm either going to be burned by you, Tiffany, or I'm going to be refined by you. <laughs> and we just laugh about it. And then we also are like, oh my gosh, but it's so funny because it's so true. And so we're both very grateful. Um, during this, you know, the interview, I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but it was not easy. I believe I cried. I believe that, um, like, you know, all the things that need to come out came out. Um, and it's such a vulnerable space that we both knew that even though we say it and it's hurtful and it sucks to say it out loud, like we knew it was out of love to really hope for the best in each other. And then he left, he wasn't at the retreat. I told him, please don't come to this retreat because he was uh, had the option to also join in. And I was like, I need to do this for myself 
and I need to be able to have a space where I feel like I can fully express myself and not feel judged, not feel like someone knows things about me and I can just share it freely when I'm ready and when it needs to be out. Um, so when I was younger, I'm going to share just one of the retreat or one of the sessions. So literally this retreat was not like a retreat where you're like relaxing and like doing yoga or it's literally hundred percent focused on you. And the amazing thing about these healers are so intuitive. They know how to navigate and get you to where you need to be. So one of the healers, her name was Linda. She was my healer for the first night and we kind of went to do like inner child work and I've done inner child work before and yes we did like you know visualization of me where I remember the first time where I felt like unsafe or I needed to feel like I need to protect myself or where it just really you know kind of just like that memory and you know I kind of went back to maybe four or five years old where I remember my dad coming home drunk and my dad you know he is you know a Korean immigrant that grew up in Korea his parents died during the Korean War he was an orphan and so he really grew up with no love or no parents to love him and even his extended family really did not take him in as family so he was literally an orphan child and so if you can imagine having a dad that really didn't know how to love really didn't know how to express himself and numbed himself with alcohol as often as he could to just like hide his pain my dad was that and at the time of course i didn't know i didn't know his story i didn't know what was going on but i just knew he was coming home drunk when he was drunk he would yell and scream and cry and i didn't really understand as a young child as any child would and felt very scared and i felt that i had to protect my mom i had to protect my older sister i had to protect my brother and it's so weird because i'm the youngest child but I felt that I had this duty to protect them and be strong and just like be the, the savior of the family, which was not necessarily a last or, you know, a child's role. But for some reason, I decided that was my role. And that's kind of where this whole trauma started. And that kind of was the point where I started to just really live my life that way. I don't trust a lot of people. I have a very handful of close friends and I love intimate groups. But yes, during that time, when I go back to that moment, I'm just like, oh, I built this identity of who I am to protect myself, to feel strong, to feel safe, to feel like I'm in power and control. And yes, it served me great ways in a lot of parts of my life. But now that I'm almost 42, it really did not serve me in so many other ways too and now i'm like wow why am i always angry and i didn't know why i was always angry i was always angry and i just kind of used the excuse I'm like oh koreans they were just like feisty we're angry we have the korean rage just like this term k rage whatever and so i would just joke about it and but really at the core of it now that i know it all stemmed from those moments as I was a toddler or a child and just kind of feeling really, really scared and really just not knowing what I need to do, but that was the best thing I could do for myself at the moment. And that became my identity until now. And so anyways, um, I'll share more about that a little bit later, but I just kind of wanted to share like, that was such a very significant point of my life where that decision of me choosing the way that I wanted to be and show up was that good for that moment and maybe for several other moments, but it didn't serve me anymore. And now as an adult, it really did not serve me. It really affected my um, relationships with friends, family, um, my ex, you know, marriage, uh, just a lot of different things and I'll have to kind of dive deeper and think about more and I can share those stories later but yeah I just wanted to share that with you guys and it's just crazy to think how an instant of something can just like really imprint and be 
in your space, your mind, your spirit, and operate. I mean, you're just operating from that. And, and it's like, you actually can have a choice to change that. You can actually go back and be like, you know what? I'm okay now. My dad is good. You know, I understand what he went through. I don't have to protect myself. I don't have to feel safe. Like I am safe. Like I'm good, but I don't need to respond in the way that I do or be angry or be this or that to continue to live my life. Um, yeah, so I'll have to go back through my journals. Um, it feels like it's been years since I went to the retreat, but that was just like a story I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, one of the healings of many, many healings was four and a half days, but like we're there for six months, which is amazing, especially being a mom of two and having people take care of you, people paying attention to you, you being able to rest and focus on yourself was like a dream. Um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing this journey with you guys. I hope this was, uh, you know, helpful in whatever way that it was or that it can be. And thank you for listening. Thank you for allowing me to be vulnerable. Thank you for allowing me to speak and mess up. Um, I hope that, you know, what I shared next will be helpful as well. And, you know, I want to take you along this journey with me because I have an amazing journey to share with you guys. There's so many things that have happened since then till now and continuing on. And I hope that you guys can be with me to see these changes, uh, see this growth. Like there's so many exciting things I can't wait to share, but thank you for listening. I'm going to finish my dermal planning off camera uh, as I couldn't really focus. And ah, I appreciate you guys so much. And thank you. I love you guys. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. You know, be in touch with you and remember you and remember that you have the choice to choose what you want in life, how you want to feel, how you want to step into this moment, this day. And so love you guys so much. Thank you. Bye.